I'm Gold Digger Dave. Welcome to the Mind Lab Show. Here's what we've got coming up uh, tonight for you on the show. Lockie's going to share us a quick tip for uh, new prospectors and things like that. The Equinox 800 or the Gold Monster will help you sort out which machine is right for you when you're going detecting. And, of course, we've got a weekly viewer, viewer giveaway and some very exciting store bargains. Uh, a live show bargain you're not going to want to miss. Let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil When I'm out there swinging my detector That signal's so sweet when I hear that beep beep Couldn't think of many things better There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil When I'm out there swinging my detector Okay, well, let's uh, got the intro out of the way there. Now we're going to come and have a look at this week's gold news, and we'll start once again with the gold price. So the gold price has been uh, a little bit uh, off the ball at the moment. It's come slightly off from its peaks. It's still trading at somewhere around about the $2,450 an ounce. So you can see up on the graph there, there's um, a little bit of uh, sideways move. It hasn't really gone up. It hasn't really gone down since its last upward run. But with all the uncertainty around in the world, it's sure to bode well to, uh, for the upward trend in the gold price that uh, we're currently seeing. So that's the gold news for tonight. I hope uh, that gives you a bit more insight on where it's heading. And let's see the gold price continue to go higher. Of course, gold being the gold news, this lucky find was found uh, in China, actually. It was a 17-pound or nearly 8-kilo nugget that was found by a herdsman in western China. OK, it's a quarter of a million dollar uh, piece of gold there that was uh, dug up and it was uh, practically lying on the surface. It's a rare piece, not just because of its size, but also because of its quality and shape. Sometimes you've just got to be in the right place at the right time. So on the gold treasure news now, we're having a look at the store update for the miner's den. So the store update for the miner's den this week is uh, showing us that our Adelaide, Bendigo and Melbourne stores are once again open for foot traffic. And, um, of course, we've also got to be safe, keep ourselves there, scan in on our QR code or come and see uh, one of the guys in the store. Open from 9am uh, till 5pm um, on Monday to Friday and uh, from Saturday, 9am till noon. Of course, we are closed on Sunday. Now, look... Uh, no mask, no entry rule, so if you're dropping into the store, please bring your mask. We just want to keep everyone safe, and we're still shipping daily, um, so jump on to minersden.com.au and we'll get your uh, goods out to you. Now, Sydney, unfortunately, is a slightly different uh, case at the moment. Uh, due to the government restrictions, we're only open for click and collect. So we'll be open for uh, click and collect between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. on Monday to uh, uh, Friday. However, we'd much prefer that you just jump on our website, order what you need. We'll get it shipped straight out to you. We've got 150 bucks off on uh, 150 bucks or, or more or less. No, sorry, or more, and you'll end up with free shipping on on those orders as well. So uh, go to minusden.com.au. You can fix all that up there and you'll certainly uh, be up and running with all the gear you need to at least get yourself ready for when we can get back out and go prospecting in New South there. OK, the next thing that we've got to look at now is uh, we've got some demo days and training that is uh, coming up. So for the training days at the moment, they're currently uh, available online. So if you to jump online, uh, click onto our uh, tab there that's on the training, and this will bring you up and show you what's available there. So the ones that are only available at the moment are in Bendigo. So we've got some spots available on the weekend for the 14th and 15th of August. There's some left, I think, for the Sunday session for the uh, 2300. We've got some GPX 4000s, 45, 5000 training uh, there and some 7,000 uh, training courses, still some spots left in that one as well. So if you bought a machine from us and you're wanting to go out and get some training, uh, jump online, pick the date you want, 
give the store a call if you bought the machine because that way we're going to be able to book you in for free. Uh, you'll get all the details. You come out and learn how to use your machine in the Bendigo gold fields. Um, so it's been a while, but like I said, there are still some spots available there. The 6,000 course was actually fully booked out, uh, but we are looking at scheduling some more, and I think we've got some more coming up uh, shortly, so we'll let you know about those in, uh, on next week's show. Now, at this thing, we used to run a lot of uh, things called demo days, and we tried to run them each month uh, around the stores. Well, obviously, that's been thrown out the window at the moment with the way uh, COVID has been. And um, you'll be seeing now we've structured our first uh, demo day for Adelaide, Melbourne, and uh, also for Bendigo. So three demo days, all on September the 18th. Uh, if you don't know what a demo day is, uh, we bring all the machines out, give you an idea on what products use for what circumstances, on what we might be able to use uh, in the gold fields. So it gives you a lot more information on all about the machines and where you might fit if you're actually uh, going to buy yourself a machine. So we have a sausage sizzle at lunchtime. The day kicks off about 10 a.m. after the sausage sizzle and you've had your, uh, your information. Uh, the Mine Lab experts from Miners Den will be available to answer any questions you might have and hopefully we can get you um, out digging some holes. Now look, uh, always remember, to stay up to date with all these changes and things and the dates of our, our training and demos and all the other events that miners then participate in, uh, uh, please jump online, subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Uh, the details can be found at uh, minersden.com.au. So, next up, uh, we start to look now at uh, our weekly viewer giveaway. Now, look, this week, uh, it's quite a, a good little prize here. It's actually the uh, Tiger uh, Blade with Sheath. So, this is a perfect little uh, companion for digging plugs and things out in the ground. And for the serious treasure hunter, it has a serrated edge down the side here, which makes it easy to cut those plugs out. Uh, and also, the point here, so once I've cut round a pug round uh, on the grass, I always make sure I only try and cut three sides, so therefore I don't actually kill a grass. When I lift the pug over, I can put it back in and it still has some connection to its original root system and most of the time the grass will still stay alive there. Of course, it comes with a sturdy pouch here, got a belt slot that can go through, drop that in. Absolute uh, winner of a tool if you're out uh, for hunting uh, coins and relics and treasure and things like that. Now tonight I've got a couple of these to give away. So there's one there for our YouTube viewers. There's also one there for our Facebook friends. And all you have to do to go into a running to uh, pick this up is uh, say hi uh, or put a comment in the feed. And uh, keep watching and I'll uh, draw the winner a little later in the show. Now look. Next is time to catch up with uh, Lockie, uh, and he's got a few quick tips for people who are looking to get in or new to prospecting. G'day, I'm Lockie from Miners Den Bendigo, and tonight on the Mine Lab Show, I'm going to share a quick tip for the new prospectors out there. If you're just starting out in the prospecting world with a detector, I'm going to share a few little tips with you to make things run a little bit smoother. Now. One thing that we often see is when new prospectors come out, they tend to leave jewellery or watches, things like that on their hands, and we need our hands for prospecting. Another big killer with our detectors is steel cap boots. Now we want to make sure anything that is metal, we want to get rid of even little zips on our jackets or steel eyelets on our boots. We probably want to look at, later down the line, potentially getting some new boots without any steel in them at all. I've just got a target with the Equinox, and I've had a scoop. Now I'm going to put this over and just check if there's a target in there. I can hear there is a target, but what's actually happening is I'm detecting the ring on my little finger here. Now just watch as I put it over. You can hear that it comes present. If I have it in my other hand without a ring on it, there's nothing in that at all. So I'm actually hearing the ring and if I have to do that a lot of the time, I'm going to start to get confused. It will make the day very frustrating. Another annoying thing when we go detecting is steel cap boots or like hiking boots with little metal eyelets. Our detectors are very sensitive and they, they are metal detectors, they're not just for gold. They'll pick up all different types of metals. If you have a look here, as I start to sweep, 
my coil is always close to my feet. So if I have a steel cap boot on, like I do at the moment, you'll be able to hear the target response when I go over my boot. That can get very frustrating if I'm trying to detect in a really scrubby area where my coil's right back near my feet. So it's a good idea to jump down to, you know, your local shoe shop, ask them and tell them what you want to do with your boots and make sure you get them without steel caps or any metal at all in them. A really important tip for the newbie prospector is to purchase a miner's right. Every state in Australia requires you to have a miner's right. Go on and check your government rules and regulations and you'll be able to purchase miner's rights from there. Now another important tip as well is to purchase a map so you know exactly where you can and can't go. Some places in Victoria have heritage overlays where we can't detect and it is your responsibility to figure out where you can and can't go. I'm Lockie from Miner's Den Bendigo and that's been tonight's quick tip on the Mine Lab Show. Tips for the newbie prospector. Okay, fantastic. That's uh, some great information, some great little uh, pointers there for new prospectors and things like that. But now, it's time for us to get up to our store offer this evening. Now, we're going to do something slightly different tonight. We're going to do an actual live show offer, which we've got up there on the screen. The live show deal is if you use the code uh, FREE28, and this is lowercase, so it's case sensitive, FREE28, when you get to the discount field at checkout, you're going to get free shipping on your pay dirt, pay dirt combinations, pay dirt and pan, pay dirt and panning kit, uh, multiple bags, free shipping while I'm live tonight. So it's only going to be available while I'm live. Once I finish talking, the deal's off. So uh, better get on there, open another window and start clicking. Okay, so that's one deal we had up. The next deal we've got now tonight is the uh, Gold Monster 1000. Now, uh, you've been able to see some of these prices around at some of the, the, the bottom end big box retailers that really don't offer you any service or anything like that. Well, Miners Den has decided that we're going to come in and play with these uh, uh, non-service big box retailers, offer you as close as we can to the pricing on a gold monster that you can get at some of these places, but of course you get the service that the Mine Lab experts, Miners Den, are renowned for. So that's the gold monster there. Jump on and have a look at that one. The other one that we're uh, having a look at this week is the Equinox 800. Now, we're smashing these things out at $1,089. Of course, you've got somebody you can ring who knows the product. If you buy your box from uh, one of the lower end trashy big box retailers, you're certainly not going to get that kind of service. Same price. Why wouldn't you buy from Australia's largest and leading mine lab outlet in Australia? Minersden.com.au. Those deals are only for a limited time. So uh, with the Equinox there, just keep watching because we'll have a um, top tip coming up soon to help you, uh, help you uh, get your machine uh, working and everything between the Gold Monster and the Equinox. Now, of course, we've had this deal on for a little while now. It's the SDC 2300 deal, 3950 online, in-store, only a few days left. If you want an SDC at an unbelievable price, jump on there and uh, we'll be able to get you sorted. Uh, like we said, if you're in a COVID restrictions area, we can get shipping every day. Your parcel will roll up and you'll be able to start learning for when you can get back out and go prospecting again. So, of course, uh, these offers are all online and uh, we're able to um, uh, help you out if you need a hand just by contacting us uh, over the phone, via email or through our chat service on minersden.com.au. Okay, so that's the uh, store offer for this evening. Uh, next up, we've uh, got coming along uh, a little segment on our... Do, do, do. I'm just a little lost here for a moment. One second, so we've come across from our store offers here and we're now going across to have a look at uh, our question here. So we've got uh, a question here after that question from uh, a question from uh, Corey. Well, Corey does a great job in putting the questions up. Sorry, I just got a little lost there, guys. Um, Corey does a great job putting the questions up. So we've got a couple here that are coming during the week. Haven't had a chance to get to all of them, but uh, we've got one here from 
uh, Glenn F. And Glenn says, hi, Dave. Uh, uh, Carissa and I have a 6,000 that we absolutely love, one each there, which is great. His question is, uh, do they have a communications or service port on them? Uh, if there's updates, uh, do my lab let us know? Well, look, thanks, Glenn. That's a, that's a great question. Firstly, uh, glad to see the GPX 6000 going really, really well. The 6000s, uh, Jack and Jill have done really well with theirs as well, so that's great news. My lab can issue updates onto the machine, so the updates can be downloaded through a smart port that we'll have a look at in a moment. Uh, there hasn't been any actual um, updates released for the 6000 as yet. But usually what you'll find happens is MindLab will um, uh, let the dealers know and the dealers are then able to uh, get out, let you guys know that, hey, there's an update and the way that you can do it so you can download it into the, the machine. Or in other cases, if you're not comfortable with the, the computers or you haven't got one that's readily available, the Miners Den stores always offer that service to update your machine. It doesn't matter where you bought it from. If you drop in and see us, the boys will look after you and get your machine up, updated up to the latest specs and everything like that. And, of course, dealers will let you know when those updates are available. Remember, if you join our mailing list um, and get our weekly news or maybe like our Facebook page, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're always going to be up to date with the latest happenings in the, uh, the prospecting, mine lab, gold detecting market. Uh, we get the news uh, to you very fast after we learn it and you'll certainly be able to... Um, uh, learn more about these kind of things if you keep your eye on there. So thanks very much there for that one. Uh, Glenn, that's really great. We're actually going to turn our spotlight now onto an accessory that might be more efficient to uh, help you when you're actually out and about. So uh, one of the things that uh, I'm looking at here is a couple of uh, uh, shafts and uh, this week's product spotlight is on shafts. Now shafts are uh, an important thing for if you're out on the field. You can get an individual shaft for each one of your coils. Now by getting an individual shaft for each one of your coils, what you're going to find is that you're going to be able to uh, make it so much easier, and I'll flip my page there, make it so much easier so that um, uh, you can uh, swap your coils very quickly and easily. Now, most mine lab detectors have uh, accessory shafts that are available for them, and uh, it just makes changing the coil, as I said, an absolute breeze. So, uh, each coil that I regularly use, I have my own individual shaft. Um, so, it reduces the wear and tear from me unwinding the cable each time at the stress points on the cable, having to undo the bolts and the teardrop washing things. Uh, I have just a shaft for each one of my uh, my coils that I use regularly. So look, if you're needing another shaft or anything like that, it's a great little idea to, to make your, your prospecting life a little bit easier. Head to minersden.com.au, check out your machine. If you've got a second coil, grab yourself uh, a spare shaft there. And uh, uh, with the cost of the shafts, it's uh, hardly even a gram of gold, I believe now. So uh, why not have life a little easier? That's tonight's product spotlight. So next up uh, tonight, we're going to have um, Lockie again. Uh, and Lockie's got this week's uh, top tip for us. And it's uh, choosing between the Mine Lab uh, Gold Monster 1000 or the Equinox uh, 800. Now, it all comes down to what you're wanting to search for. G'day, I'm Lockie from Miners Den Bendigo. And tonight's top tip on the Mine Lab show, we're going to be looking at a Gold Monster 1000 versus an Equinox 800, what is the right choice for you? When choosing between the Equinox 800 and the Gold Monster 1000, we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. What do we want to go out and detect? If we want to find coins and relics, or go hunting on the beach as well as a bit of prospecting, probably the Equinox 800 is a much better option. We'll talk a little bit about him in a minute. Now, if I wanted to go out for dedicated gold prospecting, then I'm probably going to choose the Gold Monster 1000, and we'll tell you why we'll unwrap the two of them. I have the Equinox 800 in my hand. Now, I've got the smaller 6-inch coil on it because I've set it up for gold prospecting side of things. I'll talk a little bit about him in a minute. The beauty about the Equinox 800 is it's so versatile. It has lots of different modes in there to go hunting on the beach, in the park, or in farmer's fields, but it also has a gold mode inside. Now, that will make the detector 
compete with the Gold Monster very similar with this six inch coil. So it's a really good all round coil if you're thinking about dual purpose detectors of heading down the beach on a holiday or zipping out of the gold fields. It's probably the detector to choose. When I'm out in the field looking for gold with the Equinox 800, it is highly advisable to purchase the small six inch coil. By using that, I'm matching almost the same performance with the Gold Monster. The Gold Monster works on a 45 kilohertz range, which is the most optimal kilohertz range for finding small nuggets. When I match the same size coil, the Equinox actually works on a 40 kilohertz range, which is pretty well the same. It's going to give me great performance, and I still have the options of putting my standard 11 inch coil on and going to look for some coins or relics around the gold fields. The Gold Monster 1000 is a very versatile detector. It's coming just under the price range of our Equinox 800. However, it doesn't have the same discrimination patterns or numbers that get displayed on the screen when we get a target. It is still very, very easy to use as well as the Equinox 800, but it is really geared up for genuine prospecting, so looking for gold. Now, it comes with two different coils, a small five inch coil, and it also comes with a 10 inch elliptical coil. So you're getting two coils wrapped up in the one bundle, which is just great. The beauty about the Gold Monster 1000 is it is so sensitive to smaller pieces of gold. And there's been lots of people that have had great success getting small pieces of gold off surfacing areas, as well as on the mallet heaps. It's very, very simple to use, has an on off button, sensitivity up and down, as well as an automatic mode and volume up and down. And the rest you can just almost set and forget. The Gold Monster 1000 would not be my choice for hunting coins and relics on the beach. I'm going to stick to the gold fields with this one because that's what it's designed for. So there you go guys. I hope that really helps you choose which detector you want to use. Just remember if you're out there looking for coins and relics as well as a bit of gold on the side then the Equinox 800 is probably the optimal choice. If I'm just heading out to the gold fields just to look for gold, I'm probably going to look at the Gold Monster 1000 as it's slightly better in its performance on the gold fields. I'm Lockie from Miners Den Bendigo, and that's been tonight's top tip on the Mine Lab Show choosing between an Equinox 800 and a Gold Monster 1000. Thanks again for that, Lockie. Uh, more great information. Um, keep up the fantastic work. Now, look, uh, I had another question come in during the week here from uh, Karen M. Uh, and Karen's asking, uh, what tips uh, do you have for detecting when the ground is wet or damp from rain? We have an Equinox 800 and an SDC. Well, look, thanks for the question, Karen. Look, I'm going to treat this as uh, two, so the two machines separately. So let's start first with our Equinox uh, 800 and let's go to the beach area for starters. So the Equinox 800 is great in the wet sand and down on the beach. When you're using that to try and uh, drop back uh, uh, the fluctuations from the wet sand or from the salt in it, the Equinox you can plug that into uh, the number two pattern on beach. Number two pattern on beach is uh, designed and optimised for wet sand or in the water and that should make your machine much, much more stable when you're operating there. Now look, if it's still a little unstable, the thing I'd look at next is to back your sensitivity back a little bit. So if it's getting a bit chatty, if you back your sensitivity back, it'll make the machine run a little more stable. I always like to try and get my machines running as stable as possible because it means that I can hear the faint interruptions more easily and they're more likely in a lot of cases to be my goodies. Now, if I'm out in the gold fields, uh, the other thing that I will always do with these is I will always do the noise cancel first. So uh, I do that even if I'm on the beach, but noise cancel, uh, get the machine so you've knocked out the electromagnetic interference. If you've locked out the electromagnetic interference, then uh, it should be fairly stable there. I'll usually operate in goal one if I'm out in the the, in the uh, gold fields, and I haven't had a lot of experience with the with the 800 in the gold fields, but. If it's a bit unstable or um, uh, a few false signals, that kind of stuff, the first thing that I head for there is to back my sensitivity back. Sometimes I might back my sensitivity back to get it uh, stable in the really wet ground or, again, similar in really highly mineralised ground. I might back it back to halfway. So that's the first thing. You'll find it's going to be harder to get rid of the, the, uh, wet, the, the effects of the wet ground uh, with this machine in the gold fields than what it is, say, down at the beach. 
And of course, when it's really, really wet, sometimes you'll find you're digging some false signals on charcoal and things like that. Um, and again, backing the sensitivity back will help you uh, do that a little bit. So that's the Equinox 800 that we've covered there, both in the gold fields and down on the beaches. The next one we're going to have a look at is your 2300. Now, look, your 2300 is going to be much better in the um, uh, wet ground. You're going to find by much better, it's going to be much more stable than what you're going to be able to get out of your gold monster. Um, and that's because it's different technology. So, uh, again, the first thing I do is do a noise cancel on the machine. I get into the area from the wet ground, do my noise cancel, knock out the effects of the um, electromagnetic interference. I then want to go and um, uh, see how stable it is then. I uh, usually starting out on number two and I'll wander around with it on the factory preset. If it is stable in number two, uh, then I might try to go up a little bit. Usually in wet ground, you'll find you may need to be in number two or possibly even back to number one to make the machine start to run stable. In really, really bad circumstances, uh, I may, and it's super, super wet, I may actually even put the machine back in, uh, the STC back into uh, the salt mode. Now, um, you're going to lose sensitivity, but as a last resort, at least you can still go out prospecting if you spent your time and travel to the gold fields, you can at least still keep operating that way. So look, I hope uh, that helps you a little bit there, more there with that, Karen. It's just perseverance and keeping the sensitivity back uh, helps a lot when there's uh, too much noise coming from the wet ground. Now, we have a range of tips on uh, the Minus Den uh, Australia YouTube channel there. Uh, should help you getting all your uh, prospecting and stuff together. So you can uh, check those out for um, uh, some further help and reference and things uh, when, you, uh, when you get a chance uh, and you'll be able to hopefully uh, have enough information to keep you up and running uh, in the wet ground. So that was that one there. Now, look, uh, you can, uh, of course, always be, after you've checked out those, if you get stuck, why not jump in and have a chat uh, like we are with one of our Mind Lab experts. This week on the Mind Lab show, we're going to bring you another one of our staff profiles. Let's meet Shane from the Bendigo store. G'day, Shane, how you going? How you going, Dave? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, I've been, uh, had you here now, what, over 10 years working for us out of Bendigo. Yep. Um, and your role within the store is? Well, predominantly sales. Um, I've done training sessions uh, from time to time. Make sure the shop has plenty of stock. Uh, make sure we get our post out each morning. So yeah, a bit of everything, it, it keeps me busy. That's uh, great news. Uh, so you're responsible for shipping out the orders and things like that, as you were saying. Obviously, over 10 years, you would have used a few of the uh, the mine lab machines. Have you had any luck to find some gold with some? Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually take my gold prospecting pretty seriously. So when I go out for a day, um, I really do want to find gold. Um, currently, I use the 6,000. Um, I'm going back over areas I've prospected um, in for 30 years and yeah, I'm getting a lot of small pieces of gold with the 6. Yeah, well the 6,000 has been dynamite and obviously you've had a crack at the 5,000s, the 45s and things like that mate, when they were around. Yeah, definitely. So that's uh, given you a bit of an idea on what Shane does for us here at the uh, Bendigo store. If you need to get in contact with Shane, if you need a bit of advice or anything like that, or you simply want to purchase something, all you have to do is jump on the phone, give the store a call, jump onto our Facebook page and uh, leave us a message and uh, we'll be able to get you in contact with Shane and he will certainly be able to solve your problems. That's another MineLab expert from the team at Miners Den. As I said, you know where to go if you need to get in contact with Shane. Okay, that's uh, one of the Mind Lab people, Shane, been with us for quite a while here in the Bendigo store. Uh, knows the uh, detectors in and out, so by all means, drop in and have a chat. Now, we've got next coming up is our store offer that we've got coming up this evening. So just a rem reminder, this is our live show deal. We're going to do one of these each week on the show. It's only available while I'm live. Use the code FREE28. Make sure you use lowercase, it is case sensitive, and uh, put it into the discount code on checkout. You'll be able to get free delivery on pan, pay dirt and pay dirt and panning kits and 
all that kind of thing for there. So that's that offer. The next one I'm looking at again, just a quick reminder, 999, smashing it on the Gold Monster 1000. Of course, the Equinox, I mentioned that earlier, 1089, They're smashing prices, SDC offer. Finishing shortly, make sure you get in and get yourself an SDC. You haven't seen prices like this for a long, long time now. So, uh, it's now time for us to have a quick uh, little visit to one of our gold hotspots. A great little location near Ballarat. Uh, so, let's roll a clip. <laughs> Smythesdale is a small town in country Victoria on the Glenelg Highway, 19 kilometres west of Ballarat. The town was first established during the Victorian Gold Rush and was known as Smythes Creek until 1864. Reports of gold being found at Smythes Creek started circulating in 1848. This was well before the official gold discoveries in 1853 and gold continued to be unearthed along Smythes Creek toward Cape Clear through the early 1850s. Between 1851 and 1853, the population of the area fluctuated between 200 and 1,000 diggers. A sizable Chinese camp known as Phoenix Camp was established on the corner of the Haddon Ross Creek Road. The Chinese were important miners on the Smyce Creek goldfields. They extracted alluvial gold and provided labour for the quartz and deep lead mines in the area. In 1856, a school opened, and by 1861, the town was large enough for a local courthouse and borough council to be established. Smythesdale soon had numerous services and businesses, such as Mechanics Institute, Library, Foundry, Sawmill, Brewery, and numerous hotels. In addition, a public park was laid out, and several sporting clubs were started. In 1883, Smythesdale was connected by railway to Ballarat and in 1915 became part of the Grenville Shire. The railway line in Smythesdale was closed in 1983 and is now a recreational rail trail. Smythesdale today retains its historic goldfields charm with many historic and tourist attractions to visit. A fascinating place to explore is the Jubilee Company Quartz Gold Mine Ruins. On the self-guided walk, you'll discover battery foundations, engine beds, a water race, old mine shafts, surface workings, tailings, and old house sites. When visiting Smythesdale, a detector in hand is a must. The local goldfields offer prospectors many areas of shallow diggings on Crown land. Doug Stone's Ballarat Smythesdale Goldfield map provides an excellent starting reference as the area is known to yield sizable specimens and nuggets. When staying for an extended period, you can experience one of the best campgrounds in the Ballarat region. Smythesdale Gardens provides excellent visitor facilities and is the perfect base for your next prospecting adventure. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little hot spot there. Great spot to go and have a bit of a poke around with your detector. Uh, not too far out of uh, Melbourne as well now that we can get around and travel again. Now, I just saw there was a question about the 6,000s and the 7,000s. Do we have them in stock? Uh, we don't have any 7s just at the moment, I saw, but uh, I do believe they're coming in in the next day or so. So if you're wanting one, give one of the stores a call and uh, we'll certainly have them in in the next uh, uh, 24 hours, 48 hours. So, we've got brings us up to our last question for tonight and um, look it's a question from uh, Russell and uh, uh, Russell has asked uh, hi Dave with a coil tech coil do you still have to uh, do the ground balancing every 10 steps on an equinox well, look thanks for the question again Russell yeah, look, uh, the equinox machines are a little bit more susceptible to the ground mineralisation so that's why you're regularly uh, rebalancing the machines uh, to make sure that they knock out the effects of that ground mineralisation now, all coils are going to need to be uh, rebalanced regularly. It doesn't matter whether it's a Coiltech or one of the MineLab uh, Equinox coils. 
Um, the advantages come from the other coils, not so much for reducing the balancing, but uh, for example, when you cover more ground, when you're looking at using a 14 by nine coil, uh, and you're going to get a little bit better depth. If you have a 15 inch round coil, once again, you're gonna cover that little bit of extra ground. So the advantage doesn't so much come from reducing the amount of times you're balancing, um, it comes from the different size. For example, a really small 10 by five one there, you can actually poke that in under the bushes and everything like that. The other advantage with a aftermarket coil, such as one of the Coiltec ones here for the Equinox, is that you're able to use that in a lot more spots where uh, it hasn't been used before. What I mean is lots and lots of people have the standard coil, but there's not nearly as many people that are going to be out there with um, a non-standard coil, so there's more ground open for you, and as you know, each uh, nuggets uh, react differently to different size and different shape coils, so uh, more ground to cover makes sense that you might pick up a little bit more gold if you're using those uh, aftermarket coils. Really, uh, unfortunately, the only way to um, really get it to the point where you can um, uh, get rid of all the noise and mineralisation is if you were to uh, go and uh, upgrade the machine. But you're looking at a step up to something like an SDC with the newer tech technology or different technology that's able to actually knock out those uh, mineral, a lot more of the mineralisation. So therefore, you will ground balance a little less. So I hope that helps you out there, Russell. Look, there were a lot of other questions and things, but we'll get to those on in the future shows. Um, uh, again, uh, our weekly viewer giveaway. This is the time when we're going to announce the uh, winner of our Tiger uh, Blade and Sheath. Two of those to give away, one for Facebook and one for YouTube. So just on the Facebook there, uh, Troy N, congratulations. Uh, you've won the Tiger Digger for Facebook. Uh, just uh, drop us a uh, PM or get in contact and uh, the boys will get that organised. Also on YouTube, Joe J. Joe J, congratulations. You're the winner on YouTube this evening. So again, let us know who you are and address everything. We'll get those out to you. Again, Fantastic product available online at minersden.com.au if you didn't win. And that is our viewer giveaway. Congratulations to all. So that brings us uh, just about to that time of the show where we say that's all we have for this evening. So with that, um, uh, let's have a quick peek at uh, what we've got in next week's jam-packed show. We're going to go back and have a look at uh, me, Dave's Digging Adventures. Uh, part two's going to come up. We've got a final wrap-up on the uh, 2021 season from uh, Jack and Jill. And you're going to see some amazing uh, photos and bits of gold and things that uh, we've got there. That's going to be very exciting. Of course, uh, changing your gold monster 1,000 to a collapsible shaft. Fantastic live viewer giveaway. I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den, and you've been watching The Mine Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Remember, tune in next week for another episode of The Mine Lab Show. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector.